Our time of confession and our time of assurance come from Acts chapter 2. The Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47, which is just after the day of Pentecost and describes how the believers were living together in unity after the arrival of the Spirit on Pentecost. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, as we look at this little picture of the church, we can be tempted to think that everything was absolutely perfect in the early church. But of course, we know that not to be true. We know that is not true. We, of course, have the story of Ananias and Sapphira who pretended to sell everything they had, as is described here, but they only pretended to sell everything they had and give it all to the church, but when in reality they kept some of those prophets back for themselves. But there was there was more too. There was also the reality that that some of the the widows and those who were needy among the the Gentile portion of the church were not being taken care of in the same way as the uh, widows and orphans of the Hebrews from within the church. And so there was there was the need to appoint deacons to ensure that everyone was being taken care of well. So that the early church was not perfect. But at the same time, as we look at this scripture briefly, briefly we can see the vitality, the liveliness, the, the, the sense that there is something big happening. And sometimes, maybe when we look at ourselves, when we look at our own church communities, maybe we don't feel some of that same liveliness. And maybe that's partly because of our own spiritual deadening or sleeping. So let us come to God. And let us confess how we do not always contribute to the lively vitality of Christ's church. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you very much for bringing us together today again. But Lord, as we are brought together and we are reminded of what the church looked like in those early days after Pentecost, we are reminded of how vibrant and alive that church seemed to be. We know, O oh God, that they weren't perfect any more than we are. But we also know that they were an active and moving force through the power of your Spirit. And Lord, we confess that sometimes we do not fight to maintain that same vitality. That sometimes the familiarity of 2,000 years of Christ followers before us breeds the contempt of lethargy and what appears sometimes to be a lack of caring or investment. Lord, we confess that sometimes we look into our own hearts and we take you and your spirit for granted. We take the gospel for granted. We take each other as brothers and sisters in Christ 
for granted. And we take this world, this mission field that is ripe for harvest, for granted as well. Oh God, please forgive us. Please forgive us, oh God, that we may live, that we may live as if you had breathed into us the very moment before. That we may skip and dance and shout for joy like the crippled man who was healed through the Spirit by Peter. Lord, we pray. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our words of assurance come from Psalm 115. Hear these words and rejoice. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to increase, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to humankind. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us worship the Lord who has made us alive in him through his spirit. Let us praise him.